Hi folks, HR Funk here with an optics review. And what I have mounted here to my Smith & Wesson Model 629 Performance Center 44 Magnum revolver is a Siley Cat G Pro. This is a new optic from Siley that they sent to me several days ago for testing, so I spent quite a bit of time over the course of the last several days testing it. And in this video, we're going to take a close-up look at the Cat G Pro. I'm going to tell you all about its features and functions here in the shop. Then we'll head off to the range and I'll show you some of that testing I've done to include the testing you saw in the opening of this video where I'm going to be shooting it with it mounted to this very revolver. So let's get right to it and kick things off with the shop review. So here we go. When you first get your Cat G Pro from Siley Optics, it comes with a variety of things. You get a Siley Optics sticker, a Velcro patch, instructions, additional instructions for zeroing the optic, a lens cloth, the optic itself complete with cover, and one of my favorite things with the Siley optics is you get a variety of mounting screws. You don't get just one pair or two pairs or what have you. There are a bunch of them. I have never not been able to find compatible screws when I've tried to mount one of the Siley optics to one of my firearms, so I like that a lot. And lastly, you get a couple of wrenches to help with that mounting process as well as zeroing the optic once you have it mounted. I have now mounted the Cat G Pro to my Canik SFX rival. In terms of dimensions, the Cat G Pro is 1.6 inches in length, it is 1 inch high, 1 inch wide, and weighs 1 ounce. The lens measures 0.83 inches by 0.65 inches, and the dot is 3 minutes of angle in diameter. The only two control buttons for the Cat G Pro are located here on the left side of the lens housing. There is a plus button on the top and a minus button on the bottom. In order to turn the sight on, all you have to do is press and release either the plus or the minus button and the dot will appear on the lens. If you want to physically turn the sight off, you need to press and hold the minus button for at least three seconds and the dot will disappear from the lens and the sight will power down. The Cat G Pro also has what Siley calls their MDS technology, which is their term for shake awake. So if the sight is turned on, but senses no movement for at least four minutes, it will go into standby mode, the dot will disappear from the lens, but anytime the sight senses movement, it will instantly turn back on and the dot will reappear. Now that only happens if the sight is turned on. If you physically power it down by pressing and holding the minus button for three seconds and it turns off, you can shake it all you want to and it's not going to come back on. These buttons also control the brightness setting for the Cat G Pro. There are 10 brightness settings, eight of which are daytime settings and the lowest two are night vision compatible. Now, even though I've mounted the Cat G Pro to my SFX rival, which is a full-size handgun, it does have the RMSC slash 507K footprint. So it's intended for smaller carry handguns like the SIG P365, etc. But I just wanted to use it on this handgun, so I happened to have a mounting plate that would accommodate it, and I mounted it on this pistol. The Cat G Pro is powered by a single CR1632 battery, and you can see the side-mounted battery compartment right here. And this is an arrangement I much prefer over the bottom-mounted batteries used by some optics. This makes it much more convenient when it's time to change batteries, because all you have to do is remove this small screw, slide out the tray, replace the battery, slide the tray back in, and replace the screw. So there's no need to dismount the sight or have to re-zero it after doing a simple battery swap. And battery swaps are somewhat infrequent with this optic anyway, because at a medium setting, it has a projected battery life of over 50,000 hours. And I didn't bother to figure out just exactly how many years that is, but it's a long time. With the Siley optics that I've been using to this point, which I've now had for at least six months, if not longer, I have never replaced any of the batteries and they're still going strong. So the batteries last a long, long time in these sites. Here's a look at the windage and elevation adjustment screws on the Cat G Pro. Both of these are graduated in one minute of angle clicks, which I think is just about right for a handgun optic. 
And this sight comes mechanically centered from Siley, so when we get out to the range it'll be interesting to see just how close it is just having been mounted to the SFX rival in terms of point of aim and point of impact and how many clicks I might need to change both windage and or elevation in order to dial it in. Siley rates the Cat G Pro as being appropriate for duty and professional use and you can see some of the things that they've done to make it more appropriate for that use beginning with the heavy duty lens frame here that is extended at the front so if the sight is dropped or if you're performing one hand slide manipulations on a hard surface that should protect the lens. Also it's difficult to see back here but there is a built-in rear sight at the rear of the optic and it's also waterproof rated to IPX7 standards. And here's a look at the three minute of angle green dot used in the Siley Cat G Pro and as always I have to say this looks much better when you're actually viewing it with your eye than it does looking at it through the camera lens. In any case, the Cat G Pro is parallax free like most optics of this sort, and I probably need to take a minute or two to mention a few things about the emitter used in this optic because Siley goes to great lengths on their website to point out a few things, beginning with the fact this is their top of the line emitter and the site just went to sleep. So that's an example of how the Shake Awake works. But with regard to the emitter, this is a windowless system, so you never have to, according to Siley, get down in there and clean anything out to keep the dot visible on the lens, so that's nice. Also, this emitter, according to them, once again, is twice as efficient as their red emitters, so that should result in longer battery life and also a brighter dot. And I used to think the whole red illumination, green illumination thing was snake oil, that optics companies were just trying to get everyone who already had a red illuminated optic to turn around and spend more money on one with green illumination by claiming that it was easier to see or what have you. But I've got to say, I have found that to be true. With the green illuminated optics that I've been using recently, and a couple of them are Siley optics, the reticle is much easier to see and the shape is much more precise with the green illumination, at least to my eye, than it is with the red illumination. So when I can, I am getting more and more optics with the green illumination because that works better for me. And the fact that Siley uses such a high quality emitter in this particular site is something I like as well. The Cat G Pro has a lifetime manufacturer's warranty and it sells on the Siley website for $209.99. Now, as you saw, at the conclusion of the shop review, the Cat G Pro was mounted to my Canik SFX Rival Dark Side Pistol, and I decided to leave it mounted to that handgun for my preliminary testing of this optic when I got to the range. Reason being, the SFX Rival Dark Side is my most accurate 9mm chambered handgun, and for the preliminary testing, I was going to be looking at the zeroing of this optic to see if the mechanical center was very close at all to where it needed to be for that handgun after just mounting it. And I also wanted to see just how much was going to be required to dial it in for proper point of aim and point of impact. Also, I was looking at accuracy with the optic affixed to that handgun, which as I said, is very, very accurate in and of itself. For my accuracy testing, once I had the optic zeroed, I decided to fire 10 shot groups from the bench off of bags at a distance of 25 yards. And I was using that distance specifically because at the greater distance of 25 yards, any deviation in the optic is going to show up on the target and it's going to be easier to see if it's holding zero or if things are starting to wander. I fired 200 rounds through the rival dark side with this optic mounted to it, and I checked it for zero after every 50 rounds. So I fired my initial 10 shot group, then after 50 rounds I fired another 10 shot group, 50 more rounds, fired another 10 shot group, 50 more rounds, and a final 10 shot group. I am not going to make you sit here and watch me fire all of those groups. Now, in between shooting the groups, I was just firing at steel targets and one thing and another out on the range, but I wanted the optic to experience the recoil impulse of 200 rounds to see if it was going to cause any issue with it holding zero. So what I'm going to show you is the initial 10 shot group that I fired when I started out the testing with this. Then I'm going to show you the final 10 shot group that I fired. I'm also, before I start firing any groups whatsoever, going to show you the very first shot 
where it's impacted the target, and give you an idea of how much was required for zeroing the optic. I'll talk about all that when we come back to the shop after you see these segments. So here we go. First shot after mounting the Siley Cat G Pro. I'm going to hold right in the center of the target's fist from this distance of 25 yards. And as bright as it is out here, I can tell you I'm having no problem seeing that dot whatsoever. Look good when the shot broke. I can see it from here. Elevation looks pretty good. I'm going to have to come left a few clicks of windage and I'll try another shot. So before I get into my discussion of accuracy and group sizes and whether or not the optic was holding zero, I want to talk for just a minute about the zeroing process. And as you saw, this was my very first shot that I fired from the bench at that distance of 25 yards. And it took me about five shots to zero the optic, which is not bad in and of itself. I covered up the zeroing holes and you can see three of them up here with these tan stickers, there's one right there, and there's another one over here someplace that was my final shot. So about five shots to complete the zeroing, but something I've noticed with Siley Optics, and the Cat G Pro was no exception, is the clicks when you are making adjustments to the optics for windage and elevation are very, very indistinct. In fact, I really can't feel or hear them I just sort of have to guess about where each click is. I could have probably zeroed the optic more quickly and with even fewer rounds if I had more distinct clicks in the optic. So keep that in mind, you folks at Siley who might be watching this, if you could make those clicks a little easier to hear and feel, it would be appreciated. Moving on to the shooting. When I got into the 10 shot groups, I used different color stickers for each of the 10 shot groups, the initial group, the 50 shot group, the 100 shot group, so forth and so on. I also used two different types of ammunition, all of which was supplied by House of Pain Munitions. This was their 124 grain full metal jacket load, and this is their 124 grain poly-coated bullet load. I was also testing that ammunition at the same time I was working on the Cat G Pro video, so you might have already seen that other video. By the way, thanks to everyone at House of Pain Munitions for sponsoring the ammo for this test. All of you can go to my website, hrfunk.com, find the link there to House of Pain and also a discount code if you want to save a couple of bucks on your ammunition. Now, looking at this group, this was my initial 10 shot group, the 50 shot group, and the 100 shot group. And the first shots were the ones that are covered with the blue stickers. They're a little hard to see back here. I had a couple of shots go a little bit wide, and I think this was just me settling in and getting used to firing the groups. 
Next, I fired the shots with the green stickers. You can see them all right here. And my point of aim, I should have mentioned this earlier, was the middle of my target's fist right here. So I was intentionally aiming a little low so I had a good, clear aiming point instead of trying to just guesstimate about where the center of the chest for the target was. So that's why the shots are all down here a little bit. So blue stickers were the first shots, green stickers were the second 10 shot group, and the final 10 shot group were the red stickers. And I'm not seeing anything in that at all that causes me to think that the zero is changing any whatsoever after the recoil of the number of rounds that I fired when I got to each of those 10 shot groups. So these are the first groups that I fired. These are the second, and I think I was just getting a little better and a little more practice at shooting my groups when I got to this because it's a little bit tighter. Again, the blue stickers are the initial group. The green stickers are the, this would be the 150 shot group with the green stickers. And the red stickers are the final 100 shot or 200 shot group that you saw in the video. And when we look at both of these, there was no issue whatsoever associated with going through 200 rounds of the respective ammunition in this test. So I don't have any problem at all saying that it's going to hold zero when it's subjected to normal nine millimeter levels of ammunition. We'll get to some significantly higher levels of recoil later on in the video. So now it was time for a little bit of endurance testing with some adverse conditions. And I started out with a cold temperature test by simply dismounting the optic from my SFX rival because I was not going to subject that handgun to this testing. And I dropped it in my freezer overnight. I put it in the freezer at about noon last Tuesday, I think. And I pulled it out about 10 o'clock in the morning the following Wednesday. So it spent about 22 hours in the freezer and after that it was still working just fine. So the cold temperature in the freezer for that amount of time did not cause it any issue whatsoever. Now I did what anyone would do. I walked right from the freezer to a glass of very, very hot water and I dropped the optic in there. In fact, if you look at it as I'm dropping it in there, you can see there's still frost forming on the optic from taking it out of the freezer. And that water in the glass was hot enough that I could not put my hand or my fingers in there because it would burn me. So you talk about an extreme change in temperature and conditions. That's what the site was subjected to. And I left it submerged in that glass of water for a little over an hour. I was gonna take it out right at the one hour point, but I got tied up talking to Mimi, so it stayed in there a little bit longer. And I pulled it out after that, and it was still working just fine. So the temperature and the water didn't bother it one bit, and I next wanted to test the shockproof aspects of the site. And I was going to do that by dropping it on a hard surface or something. But I thought, you know what? It would be more fun to subject it to a really high level of recoil. And I happen to remember my 629 Performance Center revolver. Now this revolver, I have tried to mount optics to it in the past and it has literally shaken them to pieces. They've lost zero, they've <laughs> literally pieces have fallen off of them, they've fallen apart. Which is why I didn't have an optic on here because nothing ever seemed to want to stand up to the recoil that is generated by this revolver with full power 44 Magnum ammunition which is what I was using in it for this test. This is Remington Factory 240 grain jacketed soft point ammunition. And you can tell when you squeeze off one of those rounds under the hammer of this revolver that you're holding on to a 44 Magnum because it does buck somewhat. I went back out to the range after mounting the optic to this revolver and I set things back up again at a distance of 25 yards. I fired two shots this time to zero the optic. And I was not going to shoot a lot of that 44 Magnum ammunition because it is expensive. So two shots to zero the optic. Then I started in firing for groups. I fired two six shot groups with that full power 44 Magnum ammunition out of the 629. And here's how it went. Folks, I wanna tell you one quick thing before we head out to the range for this 44 Magnum segment. And that is, as I said a little while ago, in the past, this revolver has done bad things to optics that I have mounted to it. 
and I was a little concerned about that. Specifically, I was concerned about the integrity of the mounting platform when subjected to the 44 Magnum level of recoil generated by this revolver. And I was concerned that if under recoil the mount let go, I might end up with a Cat G Pro imprint in my forehead. So, <laughs> to alleviate that potentiality, I decided to employ my trusty Marine Corps pith helmet. That way my forehead will look the same when I get done shooting this segment as it did before I started. So let's head out to the range. And here are the results of that 44 Magnum testing. Again, I had to zero the optic to this revolver when I first got to the range. That took two shots. This was my very first shot that's covered by the tan sticker here. And interestingly, even after dismounting this from the rival dark side and remounting it to the 629 and going to a completely different cartridge with a much more powerful load, the elevation from 25 yards stayed virtually perfect. So I needed to make a windage correction, which I did. The second sticker, you can't see it's covered up, but it's over here about in the middle of the fist. And once again, I was using the middle of the target's fist as my point of aim. Then I fired my first six shot group, which are covered by the blue stickers here. Now, something I have to mention that occurred during the firing of this group, and you might have seen it while you were watching the video, is when I fired the fifth shot of that group, the muzzle of the revolver got down below the padding on my rest and when I fired it, it basically blew a hole <laughs> through the padding. That shot struck right here. It was the lowest shot out of this group and I covered it up with that blue sticker right there. That may have influenced where that bullet struck the target and caused it to hit a little bit low from the rest of the group. As it was, the six shot group measured two and three quarter inches center to center, but it might have been a little bit tighter had that not occurred. Now, after that happened, as you saw, I had to edit the video because I needed to do some range <laughs> expedient repairs to my rest before I could fire out the sixth shot. But again, those are all covered with those six stickers right there in a group that measures two and three quarter inches. After that, I reloaded and fired the second six shot group 
two shots. I think the second and the final shot both went through this hole right here. If you look very closely, you can see that the bullet is almost perfectly going through that same exact hole. The other shot holes are covered up with these other red stickers. This group measures two and a half inches, didn't have any issue with the padding that time around. And even after being subjected to that level of recoil from the 629, there is no issue whatsoever with the Wolf G Pro holding zero. And overall, I was pretty impressed by this. As I said a while ago, I've not been able to find an optic of this sort that would stand up to this revolver. And I really think the Wolf G Pro is going to stay right where it is because deer season here in Ohio is going to be coming up in a few weeks. And that's going to make a dandy combination for the deer woods. And as accurately as it's placing bullets out of this revolver, I don't think I could ask for much more. So there you go, folks. For endurance testing, I tried to freeze the Cat G Pro to death. I tried to drown it and I tried to beat it to death and it never even blinked. After all this testing, my only real complaint with this optic is the fact that when I make windage and elevation adjustments, the clicks are not at all distinct. I just sort of have to guess where they are. When I think about the Siley optics and I think about this one and the others I've used, and I have another one right over here off camera. This is the Siley Cat X Pro. And this optic is very similar to the one that I have here, except this one is red illumination and this one is green. And this one has a multi reticle design. So I can switch between a circle dot reticle, a circle only, and the dot only. The G Pro has the green illumination, but it is only the three minute of angle dot. If I could have my cake and eat it too, I would prefer to have Siley design a Cat GX Pro that would have the multi reticle design of the Cat X Pro, but the green illumination of the G Pro. I think that would be a phenomenal optic. One of my favorite handgun optics, in fact, I think it is my favorite handgun optic in terms of the reticle it employs is the Wolf G that I have mounted to my IWI Masada Tactical. That is the clearest reticle of that sort on any optic I own, and it works very, very well for me. So something like that in this optic with the green illumination would be tremendous. And that's my review of the Siley Cat G Pro. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, stop by my website, hrfunk.com. Go by the product information page to look at the products that I've reviewed here on the channel, like the Cat G Pro. Also, look for the discount codes associated with those products so you can save yourself a few bucks if you decide to make a purchase. And stop by the news and events section of my website to find out all the latest things going on here in the channel and things that I've been up to. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.